Alrighty, Asperoba taking on strings in Battle City. Um, who do you pick out of this one? It's a tough one to pick between. I think Strings is deck. Out of them both, I would probably go Esper Rober just because Esper can get Jinzo to the field. Strings, his deck isn't phenomenally powerful. He needs to get Sly for the Sky Dragon, which he does have in his deck because that's kind of what his deck strategy revolves around. All right, there's Impachi, Cyber Soldier of Dark World. Reflect Bounder, Gift of the Martia, and Senri Eye. Senri Eye sort of gives that illusion of Esperoba's cheating ability in Battle City. Strings having a bit of a think about his first move. Uh, down goes Jam Breeding Machine. Speaking of Psychic, I did a Pokemon solo run and I used a Psychic type. I'm going to release that solo run straight after this, so if anyone needs anything to help them fall asleep. I'm not saying that they're boring videos, but Pokemon solo runs, they are so chill to watch that I, back in the day, I used to use them to fall asleep to as well. Um, but yes, I did a solo run with Drowsy. Um, and I tell you what, what a, uh, <laughs> what a difficult time that was. I thought Drowsy would have been a lot better, but he was solo run number 94 out of 151. So mm. I'm a, well over halfway there of doing every 151 Pokemon. From Gem 1, Red and Blue as solo runs. Down goes Senri Eye. Reflect Bounder now as well. Goes on the offensive. Change Slime is destroyed. Now, Robert does have Big Eye in his hand. He could potentially play that face down. Now, Strings did play Jam Breeding Machine, and that will put them in attack mode. So Jam Breeding Machine has its uses, but it's really, really inconvenient with how it can... There's a Kibio Drachmord that will uh, equip to Reflect Bounder. And will destroy it after the second turn that the card is activated. After that, a Kibio Drachmord will then go back to uh, Strings' hand. Alright, back to Asperoba. There's Tripwire Beast. And he can pay 100 points to have a look at the top of Asperoba's... Sorry, at the top of Strings' deck, and he sees a D spell. Probably a good thing, because that Jam Breeding Machine, unless you can play it with something else, will actually... I mean, it's saving him 500 life points with there being a token, because he's not taking a direct attack. However, Reflect Bounder... Can't attack right now because it's equipped with Embikia Drachman Drachmord. All right, down goes another slime token. You can use those slime tokens as summoning as a tribute material as well. Down goes D Spell, and Seeker elects to get rid of Jam Breeding Machine. Oh, there's Polymerization. Ah, okay. So if you have Jam Breeding Machine on the field, you can't summon as well. You can set monsters, but you can't summon them, and that blocks your uh, ability to fuse as well. Humanoid Worm Drake now coming to the field, 2200. And with Ebikio Drachmord on the field as well. All you gotta do is get rid of Impachi, and Ebikio Drachmord will do the rest for Reflect Bounder, which is a uh, which is an annoying monster to try and attack as well with with its effect. There's Blocker. The effect of Senri Eye is activated. And Beast King of the Swamps is next in Strings' deck. Down goes Tripwire Beast. And Gift of the Martia is activated and... Oh, it sends Reflect Bounder to the graveyard, so Embikio Drachmord is destroyed. And there goes Humanoid Worm Drake. You could have used that on Cyber Soldier of Dark World to have an extra 200 points, but it doesn't really matter. Um, Beast King of the Swamps will now be drawn. We saw that with the effect of Senri Eye. 
And uh, Seeker, probably a good thing he does have that token on the field now because it can act as another defense shield. However, Seeker now in trouble, no cards in hand, and Esperoba is going to know everything he draws. And the next card is Jar of Greed, so Seeker's life points are unprotected for a few turns right now. Cyber Soldier of Dark World has just been played, and we know that face down is Beast King of the Swamps, so... Okay, Seeker's life points are now unguarded. And we know that he's going to draw Jar of Greed. So we should see an Esper Rope of Victory in this first match. As this plays now. In terms of Pokemon solo runs, I am doing solo runs for Gem 1, 2 and 3 games currently. I've done maybe about 10 or so in Gen 2. I've done only one on Gen 3. I did Mewtwo. Um... Mostly I've done Gen 1, but uh, after Gen 1 is done, I will probably go full into Gen 2. So if you're a fan of old Pokemon games, which um, a lot of you watching the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, um, YouTube's an analytics thing gives me the age bracket of what the viewers are. And almost everybody is from the same age group as me, so I'm guessing that most of you probably grew up with either Gen 1 or Gen 2, if not Gen 3 Pokemon games. Doing solo runs is very, uh, very refreshing. It's almost like playing the game for the first time again because you come up against challenges from certain trainers that you never thought that you would ever have a problem with. Like, um, for example, in Rock Tunnel, there's a hiker that has two Geodudes and a Graveler. All of them can use self-destruct. Now, when you're doing a solo run, if you're using, like usually when you have a team, you have at least a water and a grass type, so you can get rid of those Geodude and Graveler very easily. Um, the thing is, um, with that Graveler, if you're doing a solo run with a normal type Pokemon, that Hiker suddenly becomes very, very difficult to get through. Same with, um, let's say, if you're doing a solo run with a Fire type, Lorelei in the Elite Four, she is an absolute nightmare to get through. So you come up against new challenges that you never thought you would. As we see Esperoba finally finish off Strings. Man, that Senri Eye, that is actually a really good card. For 100 life points to know what your opponent's drawing. That is a, uh, that is a fantastic trade. Alright, we'll go from Strings perspective this time. As we put Esper into... Is that Super Heavy Samurai Soul Shield Wall? Super Heavy Samurai Soul Shield. Well, say that five times really fast. So, who have I done solo runs on Gen 2? I've done... I think I might have done Dragonite. I did Tyranitar. There's Jam, Breeding Machine, and Revival Jam. And Strings Hand. Again, Jam, Breeding Machine. It's a bit of a double-edged sword card. Down goes infinite cards. And might as well slap down Revival Jam. I would put it in attack mode, if anything, and that's what Strings does. With only 500 defense, um, if you can get... If possible, you could use Jam Breeding Machine along with the effect of um, Gift of the Mystical Elf, because that'll be 300 points for each monster on the field. And I was watching Raw not too long ago. I didn't watch it live. I fell asleep in the morning. Um, but I was watching Raw, and for all those wrestling fans, and I know there's a few of them who watch the Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, ah, oh, devastating news about Psycho Sid. Sid Vicious passed away at age 63, I think it was. He was a, a prominent figure of the Attitude Era. Went to WCW for a little bit as well. He, uh... He was um, the one who dropped the WWF title to The Undertaker in 1997 and kind of kicked off the whole Ministry of Darkness thing as well. Is that sort of where that character grew from? It was after that match was said. Okay, Mucus Yoke. That'll gain a thousand points each time it does battle damage to life points. But does it, I think it needs to wait a turn. Alright, what's... 
What's Esper got in return? Six cards in hand, but... Alright, down goes... During your next standby phase. The attack increases by 1,000. There's infinite dismissal. Level 3 or lower monsters that destroyed the turn, they're summoned. We're past standby phase. Okay, revival jam attacks. Jinzo 7. Wasn't Mucus. Oh! Wow, okay. Okay, so Mucus Yoke is doing zero damage. I thought that still counted as, like, that effect would still work. Like, it's still attacking and, like, getting the battle damage. But if its attack is at zero, technically it's not doing any battle damage, so it's not getting that thousand point buffer. Huh, what do you know? Raging Flame Sprite is different, because that starts with, I think, 100 attack. Okay, so you would have to play Mucus Yoke with either an equip card or a field spell or something to give it a little bit of attack power before you try and u utilize that effect. Well, I did not... I didn't quite realize that right before... Yeah, okay, so if something's attacking with zero, the battle damage thing is completely bypassed. Same with Mucus Yoke's effect if it attacks with zero life... attacks with uh, zero attack points. Wow. Well, that is absolutely devastating for strings. However, he lost a few points on it, but he does still have the advantage. He's, his Revival Jam is actually clearing the field. Infinite Dismissal activates. All right, strings having a bit of a... Wow. Uh, sorry, um, Esper Roba, I should say, has gone straight to the end phase. Five cards in hand, not able to play anything. That's su uh, surprising. Why is it always when that happens? We're looking at the perspective of the player. Uh, it's not always, but we, we look at the perspective of the player that's drawing the brick. When we don't see what's in the hand, it just leaves us wondering, how can they not play something? Now, six cards in Roba's hand... And Strings very much in control here. He can just keep sitting back with Revival Jam. There's Senri Eye. We saw that in the last duel as well. Again to the end phase. I wonder what Esper Roba is holding. Alright, Jam Breeding Machine was activated, so now Slime Tokens are going to start to accumulate and Strings has drawn Jar of Greed. He does have Gift of the Mystical Elf, so if he stacks the field up with... Uh, he stacks the field up with um, good monsters, or just stuff that can attack. Sinister Serpent is face down in defense as well, so there's a shield there as well. 2,000 points off of Esper Roba, and he has to draw something, and he has to draw it quick, otherwise he's, he's going to find himself going... Uh, Going down a point, we'll go to a tiebreaker. There we go, Jar of Greed is activated from strings. He draws Remove Trap. He could get rid of that infinite dismissal, even though it uh, isn't really causing him that much grief. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Esper Roba finally plays a monster down to defense mode. And change slime as we get another slime token to the field. And he's swapped one of them to defense mode. Oh, Jinzo Jekta. Oh, he, uh, well, I mean, he couldn't swap that other slime token to defense mode because it was summoned that turn and... There we go. Strings ops for Gift of the Mystical Elf now. There's 1,500 more life points. 
back to him. And with Jinzo Jector on the field, that means that Esperova can get a Jinzo to the field a lot easier. All right, Senri activates. Esperova gets to see the card, but Strings does not. Jinzo Jector was Either its effect was activated. Either way, it wouldn't have mattered. Jinzo is summoned to the field 2400 and it makes way almost immediately for Jinzo Lord. And very, very tough now for strings. He can't activate trap cards. Jinzo Lord's effect activates 300 points off Seeker. It can destroy trap cards that are face up and do 300 points of damage for each one. There's D Spell. And uses it on infinite cards. Electing not to use it on um, Jam Breeding Machine because that will put tokens face up in attack mode, which means Jinzo Lord can pick them off and keep doing damage. Uh, Strings is very lucky that he has a D spell in his hand and he can get rid of that, uh, that Jam Breeding Machine. Unfortunately, it will activate here and he will get another slime token in attack mode. So the slime tokens are great if you got monsters that you can tribute for them, otherwise they are. It is a very double-edged sword card. It has its effects, has its strategies, but the fact that they're only in attack mode, wow. If they could be summoned in defense mode, that'd be a game changer. Alright, and down goes change slime. So, strings will flush a few more points. 2100, so he'll be at 3100 if Jinzo Lord attacks the face up slime token, the attack position slime token, and down goes Sangen. The Sangen will be able to eat either at least clear revival jam or a token, it goes after the token. I mean, you leave the opening for Sangen to get destroyed as well, which means Esperoba can pull potentially a better monster to the field. Down goes Negate Attack. And Liquid Beast is played face down defense. So strings with some defense, however, it won't last him forever. There's Senri Eye. So Esper Robo can plan as well. He's seeing every card that Strings is drawing. And Jinzo Returner. When this card this card can attack your opponent directly when this card is sent to the graveyard. I think you can draw a uh, Jinzo to the field. either from your graveyard or your deck. I have to wait for it to flip back onto the card. Special summon Jinzo from your graveyard to destroy it during the end phase. Now, Anyway, Jinzo Returner can attack directly as well. And that's not bad for a 600 attacker, especially when you've got a Jinzo Lord on the field as well. All right, Sinister Serpent's effect activates. It comes back to Strings' hand. And just playing in defense is no good for him anymore. He goes straight to the end phase. He could have flipped Liquid Beast up to destroy Jinzo, uh, Jinzo Returner. However, um, when you think about it, at a 950 attack, then staring down a 2600, that'll do more life point damage to him. So probably better to keep it in defense. There's Cyber Raider. I mean, I think Strings is cooked here. I don't think there's much more he can do to fight back against this. I've got one equipped card on the field. Will that affect his moot? There is no equipped cards on the field. Down goes Amoeba. Down goes Liquid Beast from Sangen. And does... Does Strings go for it here? Does he go for the... Uh... Oh, he does! Wow! Possible he has seen it with the effect of Senri Eye and knew that it was Change Slime or Sinister Serpent. That is the effect of Senri Eye coming into play. He knew that Jinzo Returner 
Even at 600 attack, we get it. What a play. All right. Well, that is 2-0. Um, Strings has been defeated by Esper Roba. Yeah, uh, Strings' deck just isn't that. I don't see it being really that competitive through the whole tournament, but you never know. Mokuba, after all, did get a win in Duelist Kingdom, so Esper Roba gets a win. The next match to close out this round will be Ishizu going up against Arcana, so that should be a good match. I think they played in the uh, in the Battle City Cup as well. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in, and thanks for leaving the comments as well. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe, take care, farewell.